Okay, so it's uh, January 18th, 2019. We're in mom and dad's home here on their farm, Packard Oaks, and they're going to tell us the story about the frozen ocean. Now, this uh, really intrigued me because uh, when I'd go out to the beach there in Nome, I just couldn't figure out how this ocean could freeze solid when the ro waves were rolling in and the wind uh, was uh, uh, tide would actually come in and go out. And I thought, how could this happen? And so I went out, I'd go out every, uh, and I knew about when it was supposed to happen. And so I went out about every day there in the last of, uh, of September. And uh, it was about the first day or two of October that uh, all of a sudden the sea had no waves. It was just like glass. And I thought, you've got to be kidding. What happened? And so I reached down into the water and it was, the water was just absolutely filled with, uh, with little crystals of, of ice, uh, slush, you call it. And, uh, and I thought, you know, that's killed the waves. The next morning I went out and there it was frozen solid as far as you could see. Just beautiful, uh, just as level as can be. Then the next day after that, it pulled away because of the tide. And so then again, it pulled away and it pulled away. And so you had three or four levels of ice here on the beach of where it pulled away. And then the snow would come and uh, fill all that in. And uh, that's, that's how you got a, a beach that you, you couldn't tell exactly whether you're on water or on land because they all look the same once it starts snowing on it. What, out in the ocean, what, when the ice gets so, de so deep, the, the waves, not the waves, but the current pulls the ice apart. And you'll, you come across the edge of the ice and you'll see the other edge quite a ways away, sometimes a quarter mile away or, or a block or two away, according to how much it's moved out. They call those, they call those openings leads. L-E-A-D-S, leads. And uh, when the uh, Eskimos are hunting uh, with their kayaks, they will drag their little kayak behind them with a rope uh, over their shoulders and, and then uh, get in it when they come to the lead and just uh, they have a, a paddle that's got a, a, a paddle on e like this and like this. It's just one, one paddle is all. They, not two. And they go to the other side, pull the things out, pull the rope, and that's how they hunt seal. It's pretty much by foot. And uh, they get into the area with their dog team, but they don't, uh, they don't cross it out onto the, uh, onto the, the ocean flows, they call those. When one time we were up in the air, I was up in the air and I took pictures and it showed uh, that the uh, currents can somehow gather these flows up, and they were all uh, gathered up. And another time I was out uh, hunting uh, walrus, and I got trapped in those flows. They, they were starting to crush our boat. We had about 11 of us on board, uh, uh, what they call an umiak, it's a which big is a skin boat. Yeah, it's big a great big boat. Eskimo skin boat covered with walrus hides, and uh, they. Um, the frame is made out of wood, and then the animal hides cover it. Cover it. Uh -huh. Make the enclosure. Anyway, we were we had.